E aí pessoal, aqui é a Motoberry, bem-vindos galera, de volta a Vampire. É, no último episódio a gente descobriu que é bem provável que a epidemia vampírica esteja ligada aí com a, é, a gripe espanhola, né? E aí que a gripe espanhola está transmitindo também, ajudando a disseminar a, a epidemia vampírica. Vamos só descansar aqui para poder passar uma noite e pegar alguns bônus. Eu tô com 3 mil de XP. Essa aqui parece algo interessante, só que deve ser caro pra caramba. Não, mil. Assim, não que não seja caro, né? Mas. E caldeirão de sangue. Fazê-lo explodir com violência. Vamos pegar esses dois aí. Eu também vou usar. Vou pegar o upgrade. Hum, não tem upgrade. Talvez da mordida, então. Mais dano. E um pouco mais de vida. Na verdade, eu acho que eu prefiro vigor do que vida. Tá, eu vou recuperar um pouco mais de sangue toda vez que eu morder alguém em combate. Beleza. Bom, então a gente tem que conversar com o Dr. Swanzia sobre essa nossa teoria, né? Ó, algumas pessoas foram curadas, outra morreu. Aquele cara ali tá com uma exclamação. Desaparecido? Ah, será que porque ela morreu ele vazou também? E nós temos você aqui com enxaqueca. E você com resfriado. É engraçado, ele tava com... Ele não tava com... Enxaqueca eu consigo curar, né? Acho que ele não tava com enxaqueca. Ah, não. Eu não consigo curar, não. Eu preciso da outra aqui. Tá, vamos fazer um negócio pra resfriado. E um pra bronquite também. E a gente tem... Tirando as aflições da mente, a gente tem como recuperar qualquer um, né? Bom, então vamos lá. Conversar com o Dr. Swansea. Evening, Edgar. Could I get your professional opinion? Please speak, but I have something important to tell you. This strain of flu, it's very different from the one I saw in Europe. It's downright peculiar. Really? What makes you say that? I've just looked at the blood of one of our recently deceased. I see. Do you have anything more to go on? This disease spreads and looks like the Spanish flu, but its effects differ greatly. The London strain is different from the continental one. This is very interesting. Did you find something else? Yes. Unlike the flu, the infected begin to show an increase in outwardly aggressive behavior. More than simple agitation. Once docile people become violent. You mean like rabies? Is there a chance we could create a vaccine, Jonathan, like Pasteur? By the stove, that would be smashing. There's a lot we're not seeing here. But it is spreading, and quickly. If we don't act, the whole city could be lost. But Jonathan, we've a fantastic opportunity sitting right here in front of us. A weapon of choice. What on earth do you mean? Why you, my dear boy? With your expertise and your blood, we could isolate the properties that course through your veins. Think about the possibilities. Você quer ser? Quer que eu fire uma arm? I admit it did occur to me. Blood seems to be the common factor in all of this. I totally agree. We're in uncharted territory here. Maybe it's just wishful thinking, but imagine the possibilities. We'll discuss this more later. 
Thank you for your time. No, thank you, Jonathan. But as I said, I needed to talk to you. I have some rather bad news. Yes? I'm afraid it's your sister. My sister? She's to be buried this evening at Whitechapel Cemetery. Your mother published the obituary this morning. I see. I'm sorry, Jonathan. Please accept my condolences. É. Tem que lidar com o funeral da nossa irmã que a gente matou, né? Carta de Raquel Shadana. Bom, temos uma nova pista sobre ele. A única até agora, né? Carta de aviso. Rose Strickland em relação ao parente Harry Fiddick. O Sr. Fiddick foi hospitalizado ou sofreu um grave acidente de trabalho. Ele pode perder o braço permanentemente se não receber o tratamento adequado. O Dr. Strickland alega que pode salvar o braço do homem com uma cirurgia. Porém, eu acho que se houver complicações, ele pode perder a funcionalidade do braço. Nosso jovem colega é um cirurgião muito adocioso e ousado. Tem tudo para se tornar um grande profissional em alguns anos. Mas no momento ele não tem as habilidades necessárias para uma operação tão arriscada. Não preciso lembrar dos erros que ele cometeu no passado, certo? E como o Dr. Strickland se recusa a me ouvir, eu lhe aconselho vi vivamente a proibir de executar um experimento tão perigoso. Waverly Ackroyd. Só para ter uma ideia, esse Toro Strickland... É aquele bonzinho, né? E fala coisas boas e não sei o que. Acredito que não tem mais nada para pegar aqui. Tá, eu tenho que ir no cemitério, mas antes vamos terminar de conversar com as pessoas aqui do, do hospital. Conversar com todo mundo que eu puder. Curar todo mundo que eu puder. Sobre a história de todo mundo e então. tal. Eu já... É, eu não descobri muita coisa de você, mas... Mas assim, o, o que tinha pra descobrir, a gente já descobriu, né? Tá, a outra... Ah, não posso conversar com você não, é, moça? É sério? Você se recusa a conversar comigo? Tá. A pipa tá de lá, o Rakesh tá de lá... What? Tem um brilho. How long must I wait, damn it? Blaming me will not further your agenda, sir. How long is it going to take to fix me properly? I'm... Good evening, Vamos conversar com esse cara que eu gostei dele. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any... É, na verdade já conversei tudo que eu tinha que conversar now. com ele. Vamos focar então no médico. Nos médicos, né? Investiga as ações do cidadão. Que cidadão? Deixa ver uma coisa aqui. Só falta terminar a quest do... Ah, de 6 2. Então não tem uma quest pra... Pra... Pra esses dois aí. Deixa eu ver aqui o... A única pessoa doente é o Newton Blight. E o Oswald Thatcher, que tá cada vez pior, né? Ele tá com dois coisinhas, dois pontinhos amarelos aí. Depois a gente vai lá fora conversar com ele. Um, vocês aqui é só realmente conversar o que tem pra... Pra ver, né? De mais informação. Good evening. And good evening. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. Eu não sei se ele é puxa saco ou se ele... Bom. Ah. 
I'll give you some advice, but understand that nothing beats practical experience, which can be exhausting and solitary work. Of course, sir. And don't worry, I will never allow myself to be a burden, uh, neither to you nor this hospital. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me, but I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. Meu Deus, ele é muito. Ele tem que puxar o saco de alguém. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test, a test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Oh, legal. Pelo menos tem uma quest diferentezinha. Tell me, Thoreau, what's the real cause of your dislike for Dr. Ackroyd? He refuses to admit that your blood transfusion technique is the only way to save Mr. Fiddick. I'm convinced we must use it. What Dr. Ackroyd really said is that you lack the skill to perform this operation efficiently. Is there anything you have to say about this? It's a false conceit. Dr. Ackroyd secretly envies your reputation. His jealousy blinds him. I'm not the real target here. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him? Or to prove your point? A fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father, ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior, a man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones and flesh. Bom, então agora a gente tem mais motivo para conversar com o Fiddick, né? Goodbye, Dr. Bora lá. E eu acho que eu também tenho. Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure, but my young colleague obviously disagrees. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. 
Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. If you are going to lead this surgery, I am trusting you to assume the consequences of your actions, whatever the result. I am not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Dr. Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. É engraçado que tipo provavelmente a gente que vai ter escolher quem que vai qual deles que vai fazer a cirurgia, né? E, e tipo eu tô gostando do Felix, saca? É da da vontade tipo assim de salvar ele e aí se eu escolher errado vai que o cara mata. Any news about my operation? Tá, calma aí. Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick. Unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself. But I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, doctor. How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. 1915. I was in the army. Building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. How are your children after losing their mother? They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Helen didn't bring them with her that night. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. Bom, mais um motivo da gente gostar dele, né? Mais um motivo da gente não querer que a cirurgia dê errado. É... Deixa eu só dar uma olhada aqui. Tipo, pá, pá, pá. tá, aqui a gente ainda falta uma pista dele, uma pista dele e duas pistas do Ackroyd. Esse cara desapareceu, seria interessante a gente encontrasse ele. Esse aqui tá precisando de remédio pra resfriado e eu preciso conversar com o Dr. Corcoran Tippets. Poderia até abraçá-lo, se fosse o caso. Tirando isso, não tem muita coisa nova que a gente possa fazer com eles, né? Tipo... Eu acho que já deu pra... Não tem nada de, de novo que a gente precise conversar com ninguém, tá vendo? Tudo aqui eu preciso pista. Ou... É, acho que... Não, acho que o doutor... É, o único que falta é o doutor... Indiano lá. E vocês dois, né? Ah, deixa eu entregar o remédio pro cara lá embaixo primeiro. Bom, remediado. E... Ó, ele já tá com a qualidade do sangue top. Máxima possível. Infelizmente a gente não pode enfeitiçar ele, que a gente tá nível 2. Mas, assim, se eu, for, se eu for abraçar ele, eu vou abraçar ele e o namorado dele, né? Não vou fazer só com um dos dois, coitados. Carta amassada. Clay. Ah... Ah, essa aqui eu acho que é a... A esposa dele? A esposa do cara que a gente matou, né? Do Clay Cox. Bom, vamos conversar com essa enfermeira, com o médico dela e... Vamos ver. Como estão as coisas aqui? Não é bom, para dizer o menos. Estamos estruturando contra um inimigo invisível, mais letal do que qualquer bullet de uma gun. É difícil, doutor. Um invisível inimigo? Quite a poetic term for a disease, especially from a nurse. Sorry, Doctor. 
These last few weeks have been exhausting. We could all do with a good night's sleep. Do you think this hospital can survive the epidemic? We are all volunteers here, and we're trying to hold fast, but... How do we beat an invisible killer? Some nurses have already resigned. I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals, most of them. Dr. Swansea has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them? Is there a problem I should know about, nurse? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Nurse Brannigan, if you do know something, please tell me. Anything you say will be held in confidence. No. I may disagree with some conduct, but in the end, everybody is doing their best. Gostei. Não, não vou falar. anyone that stands out? Well, I have never met someone as dedicated as Dr. Tippett's. He should be a standard for us all here. If only he were younger. Why should his age be a problem? I guess it's fair to say he's always pushing himself to the limits. He just doesn't know when to stop and get some rest. Tell me what Dr. Tippett's did. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Dr. Tippett's would have been fired from this hospital. I could not let that happen. You can't allow your emotions to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannigan. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett's in our situation? I can't say I approve of what you did, but as a field surgeon, I know that some situations require you to bend the rules. I'm not proud of what I've done, but to contain the epidemic must be our priority, so we can't afford to lose Dr. Tibbets. Nós temos uma investigação atualizada. É pior é a queda. Não lembro desse nome. Pior é a queda deve ser de seis dois, né? É. Eu sou o Nicole Corantipet, sou o erro médico. E agora vocês dois aqui, a gente tem que ir à farmácia por causa do Toro Strickland. Beleza. Tá bom que a gente vai descobrindo mais missões, né? À medida que a gente vai conversando com a galera. Não são só aquelas e pronto. Só pegar... É, não tem nada que parece. E ok. Bom, eu preciso conversar... Meu cara, Gwyneth Branagan. Achei, volta aqui. Good evening, Dr. Tippett. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No, we must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more, unto the breach. Your attitude is irresponsible, Doctor. Believe me, I've seen so many medical errors caused by exhaustion during the war. You're right, this is a war, Doctor Reed, and I don't intend to surrender. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. It's not exactly the best situation in London either. I can't have expected this hospital to be prepared for what was to come. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Brannigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. 
A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah, yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. Kokoran, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks. Maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed a body. What was the nature of the mistake? It was a two-fold error. My diagnosis was wrong, and the administered dosage was too strong. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. I have saved so many lives since then. Bom, tá aí. Eu acho que tudo que a gente tinha pra conversar. Opa! Eu protegerei do quê? Tipo. Não falar sobre o erro dele? Será? Eu vou cobrir para você, Dr. Tibbets. Por manter o que aconteceu com o Sr. Connor para mim. Eu não sei o que dizer, na verdade. I can't exactly force you to become my accomplice. You didn't force me. This is my decision to make. I believe you're still of use to the hospital, considering the situation. Then I can make you this promise. As soon as the epidemic is eradicated, I will resign. Pegamos um pouquinho de dinheiro e terminamos a investigação ali, né? What will you do after your resignation? Do you have a plan? I always fancied visiting Cyprus. Such a beautiful island. I could buy a house there, by the sea. Read poetry and wait for death. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Bom, ex exaus esgotamos o que a gente tinha para conversar com ele. E isso significa que a gente esgotou também uma linha de pesquisa aqui, né? Então, realmente, só falta essa do, do Thorough Strickland, que eu vou botar pra rastrear. É... Pera aí, como é que é? Ah, o bilhete a gente pode entregar pra Albert Palmer ou Benjamin Palmer. Ah, agora que eu vi que um é pai do outro. Bom, um... realmente acabou tudo que eu tinha que fazer aqui. O distrito tá saudável, mesmo eu tendo matado até uma Holcroft. Esse cara aqui eu já dei o remédio pra ele, eu preciso de recuperar esse outro. É, a gente vai ter que ir então no cemitério, né? E fica. Aqui. É, não dá pra. Ah, agora deu. Vou deletar aquilo ali. Bom, beleza. O que é isso aqui? Dr. Swansea e um evento desconhecido. Ah, deve ser isso aqui que a gente... Ah, gostei. Bora dar uma olhadinha lá. Deve ser aquilo ali que a gente viu, né? A gente ouviu, sei lá, quando deu aquele flash. Dentro do necrotério. Tá, tem um escala ali embaixo e tem alguma coisa por aqui.
É, tem vários escalos lá embaixo. Mas estranho, não parece que o evento que eu ouvi... Foi aqui dentro. Será que foi lá fora? Vamos tentar usar a investigação lá fora. Ai, essa minha cadeira. Ah, ó, eu tenho nova habilidade que é a habilidade 5. Pena, aconteceu por aqui esse evento. Ah, descobri o que, que é o evento. Tá, tem um, um pequeno bicho nível 24. Thomas Elwood. Ah, rapaz. Peraí, Thomas Elwood. Esse, era esse cara. Tá, eu com certeza não vou conseguir matar ele. Mas vamos tentar lutar com ele só pra gente ver. Vou recuperar o resto do meu sangue. Tem aquela habilidade nova, que é a habilidade 5. Deixa eu travar nele. Embora, né? Ô, oh, louco, tem vários zumbizinhos. Deixa eu trocar de arma. Carrega... Ah, eu tenho que recarregar é só apertar de novo. Sai daqui. Tá, destrava. Porque acho que eu vou ter que pegar os carinhas ali primeiro. Ok, vou usar essa habilidade aqui, que é aquela habilidade nova que eu tenho. Já dá um dano legal. Nossa, deu muito dano. Nossa, matei. Boa. Ah, peraí, eu troquei de arma. Não queria trocar de arma, não. Quer dizer, eu queria no começo, né, mas... Ai, ai. Ai, ai, morte. Recupera a vida um pouquinho. Uau. Ok, então, achamos o Thomas. Ele era um pseudo-lobisomem aí. Será que eu não consegui pegar nada dele aqui? Olha lá, morto. É... Queria, ter sab... Queria ter aprendido um pouco mais sobre ele. Por que, que ele virou lobisomem? Engraçado que a Thelma era que se achava vampiro e o cara do lado dela que, na verdade, que era o... o monstro, né? Aqui tem coisa... Ver se eu faço alguma, algum outro remédio aqui também. Acho que eu acabei com o meu remédio. Opa! Tratamento para cefaleia. Ah, legal! Eu posso usar no na, em alguma pessoa. Deixa eu melhorar meu porrete. Componente comum de empunhadura. Ó, esse aqui pelo menos eu já posso melhorar. E aí a gente tem ela nível 3, ela fica um pouco mais... Ela faz um pouco mais de dano. E essa aqui também eu vou melhorar eventualmente, mas eu preciso de componente de empunhadura. Tá ah, legal. Então, o carinha que sumiu, a gente agora já lidou. E eu poderia continuar batendo nos Skull que estão aqui, mas é... Experiência ínfima. Vou deixar eles pra lá. Bom, o é, que, que eu ia... Eu tava pensando em alguma outra coisa... Ah, sim, o tratamento pra cefaleia. O problema é que o cara não tá com... Opa, não é que não. O cara não tá com cefaleia, o cara tá com... Enxaqueca? Eu acho, eu acho que era cefaleia e aí agora não é mais... É. 
Bom, eu também devia conversar com o doutor... Doutor Indiano lá. Esse aqui é o hospital, aqui é o doutor Indiano. Tá, é, a única, é a única pessoa que falta pra gente conversar, pra gente ter... Abrir toda a árvore, né, dele? Tá. Tell me the truth about your appointment as a medic during the war, Rakesh. The regiment administration appointed me by mistake. I had to learn the job on the spot, sir. Very hard, sir. But I rose to the challenge. You can't impersonate a doctor. You can't improvise a medical education. People could die at your hands. You're absolutely right, sir. But as a field surgeon, It was more like being a butcher. Do you believe you have really helped these people? My ratings were within the averages of the regiment. I saved lives, Dr. Reed. Does that not say enough about triage and war surgery? Have we met before? I don't think so, sir. Why? When we first talked, you said you were glad to meet me since I was reported dead. A funny story, sir. Your sister came here a few What? nights ago. You were missing, and she was looking for your body. She must be very relieved now. Tell me that the regiment... Do you realize how many soldiers died because of that decision? You should have refused. Yes, sir. I swear I did, sir. But no one listened. When the first wounded arrived, I had to do what I could. It is an unbelievable story, Mr. Chidana. It was a time beyond belief, Dr. Reed. But I'm happy not to deal with the wounded. I prefer caring for the dead now. Are you afraid or uneasy being surrounded by so many corpses? Why should I? These bodies are empty vessels. Flesh left to decay. Poof. No soul anymore. All gone. An interesting point of view. And quite an exotic one, too. Most people fear, or at least have a respect, for dead flesh. Sir, as a medic during the war, I learned to face my death and the death of others. It's the pain we have to tame, not death itself. Olha, alguém que pensa como eu. Do you work here alone? Yes, very easy work, sir. All I have to do is watch a few bodies. The situation was very different when the main morgue was still open. Why close the hospital's main morgue? It was for sanitary reasons after the beginning of the epidemic. Cadavers had to be moved to the nearest mass grave. Why do you have to watch these bodies? Because these poor fellows have no names. We keep them in case someone comes looking for the missing. Sadly, Very rarely happens. A pawnbroker. I expect you get all types of people here. Yes, sir. All kind of people. For I sell all kind of goods. Who comes here to trade with you? It's very unhygienic, even unsafe. Diseases can spread. For the customers, for the hospital. I'm very cautious, sir. I've been a doctor, remember? And all my clients are good people. In fact, I think I only know good people. What kind of goods? With the quarantine, it's not always easy to buy things. So I trade, I exchange. Some people sell, some others buy. I like to help. Since you're not afraid of dying, Do you believe in life after death, Rakesh? No. I believe we must do all the good we can while alive. For our time is short and the obstacles are endless. Do you think you would enjoy immortality as a concept? I don't think so. Don't mistake me. I love life and I'd like to live a long life. But everything has to decay, sir. Even goodwill. So you're ready to die? No, I am not. I don't fear death, for I won't see it. What troubles me is the pain my death will inflict to those I know. You're a wise man, Mr. Chidana. No, Dr. Reed. 
I am a foolish man, but I like to think otherwise. Do you really believe goodwill cannot last? As I said, sir, everything decays. If I was to never die, goodness, I would be bored or worse. And I like to be helpful, sir. Quite depressing, wouldn't you say? Yes, but the good news is we'll all die before losing our humanity, sir. Eu não morri antes de perder minha humanidade. Goodbye, man. Beleza. Bom, conversei com todo mundo, né? Só tem mais algumas quests pra gente fazer. Claro que ainda tem, é, tipo, ele aqui. Tem, tem mais coisa pra... It's locked. Ali tem uns corpos, dá pra gente investigar alguma coisa. É, eu acho que só pra pegar aquilo ali a gente teria que matar o Hadé, o Kadé. Sei lá, o nome desse cara aí. Shadana, Shagana. Ah, enfim, galera, vou encerrar esse episódio por aqui. Até o próximo vídeo. Falou!